right, welcome back, everyone. We are delighted to have in studio tonight Mr. Stan Weber, the radio analyst of the Kansas State Wild. How you doing, man? Nice weekend for I'm you. I'm doing great. College football started, and the NFL is less than a week away. Was that a football game yesterday or not in Manhattan? I said, you know, Stan, I, I mentioned to you, I sat and I watched that game, and for some reason, I never thought K-State was going to lose it. But, boy, that was nip and tuck all the way, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a great college football game, and it makes me remember that Rick Neuheisel's coached against Bill Snyder seven times, and every time the game's competitive. He's done it at Colorado, Washington, and now here at UCLA, and the games are great. UCLA didn't give up, but K-State kept fighting, and behind Daniel Thomas got the job done. You mentioned Daniel Thomas. Hey, this guy is a beast. He is. Is it too early to throw his name into this Heisman Trophy thing? I mean, you know, he's the rainy, you know. Big 12 rushing leader, right? Well, Jack, this is a place to be on Sunday night, so you can do that. But uh, you can throw that name no, out really. there. No, really. I yeah. mean, it, he's a big time guy. I it, think he's the best player in a Big 12 conference. And I said that before the season started, and he showed that in spades in this game, the way he ran. There's tons of pressure on him. The K State didn't even throw for 75 yards in the game, but yet scored 31 points. Do you know there's only one team last year against UCLA that scored more than 28 points in a game? The Wildcats put up 31, all because of Daniel Thomas's ability to run. And, and after he got through the line, too, I mean, he got some help getting through there, but he got a lot of yards on his own. He got 234 yards against a quality opponent. This yeah. wasn't a one a double A team. No, it's amazing. It's the fifth best rushing performance in K State history, and, and K State had Darren Sproles there, so he yeah. has most of the big yeah. rushing performances. But he can slide. He can take contact. Obviously, he's physical. He finishes runs, and he shows speed as well. And, and one of the great plays is at the end of the ball game when K State's trying to score, he jumps up to throw a jump pass. Mm -hmm. I saw that. And like Tiger Woods, you're a big golf guy. You know how he, when he hears a noise and can stop that swing and everyone says, how does he do right that? In the middle of it. Daniel Thomas jumps up and is about ready to throw and stops right there, tucks the ball down, and runs for three or four yards up the middle at the goal line. It's amazing. What's he weigh? How big is he? Well, I don't know the exact weight because what they show and what he actually weighs yeah. is usually about 15 to 20 pounds different, but he could easily be carrying 230 pounds. All right, how about the quarterback? Uh, everybody thought at halftime they weren't sure about Carson Kaufman. Are we, are we judging him fairly? I mean, this is early on, and we know what happened a year ago, four stars and then he was benched. He did not have a good game, but hey, you don't have to when you got running backs like that, do you? Well, I think people are thinking about last year in those four games that he played last year, but he was only one year off a of shoulder surgery, okay. and if you're a guy who's pitched or thrown a football, you realize you're not healthy after just one year. The thing that he's doing so much better is the ball is coming off of his hand with so much more velocity, so he doesn't throw interceptions. That was helpful. And in running the options, he looked comfortable. Go back and look at the highlight plays, including a fourth down touchdown run. He audibleized his option. He executes it perfectly, pitches the ball in time. He didn't feel comfortable doing that last year. He did it very well. Now, Kansas State needs to throw the ball better, and he needs to be a better quarterback for Kansas State to win. But at the end of the day, he led the team to a victory, and that's his job. And we always say, let's look at the record for quarterbacks. He knows what he's doing. He gets them in the right play. I think we're thinking a little bit too much about last year rather than this year. But there are other, there are other quarterbacks at K-State that are going to push him. There's no doubt about it. Colin Klein, Samuel Lemure. If he doesn't continue to improve, he will get beaten out. All right, let me uh, jump to Missouri now. Your thoughts on the Tigers yesterday. It didn't look like Pinkel was ready for that option. And that really surprises me because, Stan, I would think every team on their schedule is going to throw some variation. Right? Yeah. For the triple option. Well, because you, of what Navy did to him. You said it perfectly. Here's what happened. Paul Petrino's a new offensive coordinator at Illinois. And he watched the Navy tape and said, wait a second. We got this Nathan Shieldhouse from Rockers High School, a dual threat quarterback, a Brad Smith type of player. And Missouri doesn't know what I'm going to do in this game. I'm going to bring some triple option in and try to catch them off guard. They did. Nathan Schilhouse's ability to run and the play calling surprised Missouri. But guess what at halftime? Missouri's coaches had a chance to go in, look at what was happening, and ended it all right there. So you've got to hand, hand it to Missouri, I think, for coming back. It was an adverse situation. No one thought they would be behind at the half. By two scores? Right. Jack, by two scores? Yeah. Yet they controlled the second half. They adjusted to that on defense, and then Blaine Gabbert showed up and played great. I think Missouri deserves a ton of credit for winning a ball game that oftentimes... Gary Pinkle hasn't won in the past. Is Blaine Gabbert the best quarterback in the Big 12? Too early to call that? Well, I think he definitely is in the conversation with Gerard Johnson at Texas A&M. I would say Gabbert over Johnson if it were me, but maybe I'm biased because I'm around this area. But he's got great arm strength. He can really get the ball to all quadrants of the field. What I'm most impressed with, if he rolls to the right, he can throw the ball all the way down the left sideline. There are very few guys that can do that, even in the NFL. What happened to Kansas? What in the world happened last night? Well, his, everything bad happened. Everything. 
Two missed field goals by a veteran field goal kicker. Uh, a pass intercepted in the end zone when Kansas could have got the lead. A blocked kick, you know, special teams mistakes. Everything that could go wrong did. North Dakota State, I thought, was more athletic than I expected them to be. They have a coach in Craig Bull who was at Nebraska, knows how to coach at a high level, was truly there for the upset. And I think Kansas was in for the coronation of, oh, look at our new uniforms and look at the crowd. Let's have some fun. Let's ease into this thing. We may not be great, but we're going to have fun tonight. Night, you can't go in with that attitude. You it was pen disappointing. This on the coach, don't you? Some of this, you well, got. Uh, hey, when you lose to North Dakota State, yeah. the coaches deserve a lot of criticism. There, sure. there is no doubt about it. You can't sugar, you can't sugarcoat that. The kids weren't ready. He didn't have the kids ready to play at this level. I mean, there's tons of turnover. You don't have Todd Reesing. You don't have Kerry Meyer. Those guys are leaders. They're the ones who grab the players by the neck and say, "I don't care if we're running play to the left, to the right. If we're standing on our heads, we're going to go play." Where's the leadership for the Kansas football team now? It's not only the coaches; it's the leadership position. And right now. Both of them were in flux yesterday. It was just a bad game, and it couldn't have turned out worse. They even lost the game, only scored three points. What are they going to build on? they got to find something. Turner Gill's not going to give up. But right now, if you're a Kansas fan, you're just so disappointed. they got to play Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech averaged 300 yards rushing a game line, number two in the nation. How are they going to stop that team? They're not. They they're not going to. They're going to get, get blown out by Georgia Tech. The question is, is can they go surprise Southern Mississippi? I'm looking to the next Friday after that. Everyone expected Kansas to go lose that game at Southern Mississippi. Guess what? Southern Mississippi's not a great team, and they may turn into the overconfident one. Kansas will come back and show some things that will surprise people. It might be against Southern Mississippi. It better be against New Mexico State because if they lose their first three games, the pressure is going to be keen at that home game against New Mexico State in Week Four. Always good to see you. Thank you, Keep Jack. Up the good work. Okay. You too. Stan Weber, the Kansas State Radio Network.